Okay, so if you are getting ready for college level math, and I'm talking about uh, courses like calculus, pre calculus, and even college algebra, well, you certainly need to be able to solve a problem like this. Okay, so what uh, we're looking at here is something called a rational inequality. So the problem is x squared plus x minus 12 over x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Now, to solve this problem, it's much more involved than a simple linear inequality. So maybe something like 2x plus 1 is less than 0. So to solve this problem, all you need is basic algebra. But uh, this particular problem is much more involved and sophisticated, and you definitely need to be able to do this at a college level of mathematics. All right, now, if you think you know how to solve this problem, Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you a full video solution to this problem. And uh, this comes from my pre-calculus course, which is an excellent course to get ready for college level math. If you're interested in that course, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so the first thing, just a quick review. Um, when we're solving these rational inequalities is we need to make sure that we have the inequality in correct form. Now this one is in correct form because it's already um, less than or greater than or less than equal to greater than or equal to zero. So the main idea is you need zero on one side of the inequality and then you need a simplified rational expression on the other. So in this case that's already there so we don't need to really um, uh, do that first step. It's already taken care of. So the next thing is we need to go ahead and find our critical values. Now recall from the lesson the critical values are going to be the zeros from the numerator and denominator. In other words you're going to set those um, numerator and denominators respectively equal to zero and solve. So you can see here this is the work that I've, that I've done. Okay so you got the numerator, you got the denominator, we set each equal to zero and we solve. So the first one here is pretty straightforward. It's a quadratic. You can easily solve this by factoring. And then you have your solutions right here. x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. And then the denominator x minus 1 obviously is very easy to solve. It's just x equals 1. So that now gives us our critical values. Okay. So our critical values is negative 4 3 and 1. And now we want to take those and start building out our sign chart. And this is where, you know, a good amount of work um, um, and, and really focus need, you know, really needs to be um, uh, applied to the problem or you're going to make an error. Now, what I'm going to go through next, you may have used different test uh, numbers, but that's okay. Uh, even though you use different numbers, we should be you should be getting the same answer as uh, uh, what I'm going to show you here. So let's go ahead and go from this point forward. All right, so this is the beginning of the sign chart. Remember, it's just basically like a number line, a little bit different than like what we did with linear inequalities. So I like to just kind of draw circles here, and then our critical values here, and obviously in the respective. Um, uh, order. Okay, so you're just not a random order, you're putting them in, in order on the number line. Now, <clears throat> different, um, um, there's different ways to kind of build out your sign chart, there's different, uh, but basically it's the same thing. So, you know, if you come across another book or something like that, you might see this, you know, maybe just a little bit different, but basically it's the same. Me personally, I like to draw these little lines up here because we're going to be testing each one of these kind of sectors that we kind of split up with our critical values. So in order to do that, we need to pick values here. We need to pick a value here, we need to pick a value here, here, and here. And we could pick any number within these sectors, but we want to obviously pick very easy numbers. So let's go ahead and see what I did. Okay, so here Here's our sign chart. So I chose to pick negative five for this first sector. Okay, that's obviously very easy. Zero in between negative four and one. I picked two that's between one and three. And then right after three in this sector here, I picked uh, four. So I'm not showing you this work here. Like I said, it would just take too long uh, to show all this number crunching. But what I did <clears throat> is 
in my calculator, okay, I use this particular, um, the rational expression from the inequality. And by the way, too, you can see sometimes, well, not in this case, sometimes I'll multiply this out and kind of clean this up so it's easy to uh, input into my calculator. But in future problems, you'll see that um, I'll get into this more in future problems, just to say that. All right, so what you want to do is to plug in each one of these test values, okay, into your calculator. Okay, you definitely don't want to do it by hand, and if you have a good scientific graphing calculator, you should figure out how to plug these in very carefully so you get your result. So when you plug in each of these um, test values, here's the respective results, okay? And I'm not, I don't really care about the actual numeric value. I care about the sign. So here, the first one with negative five, I got a negative in this region, okay, a negative number. In this, between this sector here, I got a positive 12, so this is positive in here. In between this sector, I got neg a negative number, so this is negative. And then over here, I ended up with a positive number. So this is my sign chart, okay? Now, I need to kind of take it a step further. Okay, let's kind of go down here now. So, now you can see my sign chart looks a little bit different because I've got to some fill in circles here and some open circles. And this is a really important. Now, on your sign charts with these problems, you really have to be aware of the denominator, okay, the zeros of the denominator, because that's a domain restriction. In other words, x can never be the, uh, any value that's going to make the denominator equal to zero. So that's always going to be an open circle on your sign chart, okay? Now, other than that, this is a less than or equal to zero, so we want to go ahead and fill in our... our uh, circles that are other critical values okay so now with that being done all right and it's like i said you have there's a lot of things you have to kind of remind yourself of and pay attention to but in this case you're saying okay got everything set up so now we're ready to kind of basically answer the question okay so the rational inequality here is saying okay this is the rational inequality we want it when it's less than or equal to zero less than or equal to zero means a negative number or zero. So we want to select the negative ranges in our sign chart, okay? So this is less than or less than zero, or less than or equal to, that's a negative, right? So our negative sectors are the following, okay? So what we have to do is just use interval notation to um, express this, okay? So you can see here, I'll move off in negative infinity, to negative four, including a negative four, so that's why I have to use the bracket, okay? Union, okay, so in other words, I, have, I got this um, sector, now I have to uh, couple that with this sector. So that's gonna be one, but not including one, all right, so that's why I have the open parenthesis, but I'm also gonna include three, okay? So that's gonna go to three, and that's why I have the bracket. So if you have any, con you know, um, confusion on this, go back and take a look at the interval uh, notation lessons that I've done. But that's basically it. Okay, and you can see, obviously, we got multiple, uh, many more problems to do here. Uh, so I'm going to get going, but this is, it's a lot of work. Okay, and, and but if you understand one and you can go nice and slow, then the rest are going to just be, you know, a, a lot of algebra and a lot of number crunching. Okay, let's get to the second one. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.